Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another oscilloscope. Marconi Instruments Oscilloscope TF2210. It's a 100 megahertz, two channels. And we've got dual time base. And I believe everything here is plug-in modules, so we can interchange these with other modules or models of the, yeah, whatever you want to do. So you can, yeah, change uh, features. It should be from about 1969, 1970. And this mega beast of an oscilloscope is... Uh, <laughs> It weighs 22, or was it 21 kilos? It was in that range. And it is a 56 centimeters deep, 23 centimeters wide, and 33 centimeters high. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, I can just barely lift it around here on my table, and I don't know if you can see... But there's no more table left, more or less, that much. <laughs> it's terrible. And I got a really, really deep table. I should probably show this. So that will be the 56. And I think my table here is, what is it? Yeah, 81. I kind of like tables that deep, so you have uh, plenty of space to play around with see you can take away the screen like that and then you have yellow is that the phosphor that is uh that is yellow i'm not super happy about what i see down here this could reveal some bad things inside of the crt so maybe it's completely dead I need to open and do a visual inspection before I power this up because I think this one was uh, stored in a long time before I got it. I was lucky to find some information online about this uh, oscilloscope. So I just uh, show some of the most important pictures right here so you can enjoy what this is uh, all about. Feel free to hit the pause and uh, read what they say in uh, more detail. The rear side of the unit is one big massive heat sink and we can see some big hefty transistors. So yeah, I think this is an all transistor oscilloscope. Look at the fuse setting, two amps, oh yeah. And that will be the impressive voltage selector. It is correctly set for 240, so all that is perfectly fine. So that was super easy to take away one of the side panels here. And now I can see this beautiful CRT. And the first thing I saw is down here. That will be the input section. You can probably already see what it is I'm, I was yelling and screaming about. That will be no visitors. Look at that. So we got four tubes so far. We got field effect transistors, transistors, new visitors, integrated circuits. That one down there. And it's, so this is full of whatever technology they had available and knew how to do. I mean, that is interesting. And also what I saw here, that will be the vertical deflection plates. And look at that. This is a transmission deflection plate system. And of course, because this scope here is really, really fast. So they're driving the deflection system with a, a special impedance along the way. 
so that you can handle the, the plates at a much higher speed. That is definitely interesting. We also got, I think this is horizontal deflection amplifiers up here, and they are placed very, very close to the plate as well. Let's look a little bit at the two time base units. I put them here side by side so we could a little bit easier compare. They are really, really compact units. Look at the circuit boards. The way that they stacked everything here is just amazing. You will see the two circuit boards here at the front. They are identical. And the two other circuit boards at the back, they are different. So there is, uh, of course, yeah, something. But I think it has something to do with the different features of the two time bases. So, of course, I expect them to be a little bit different. There is another little thing that I've seen inside the time base. And that is one little extra... Let me see where... I think I could sh can show you this from the bottom. Look what I find. That one. There's another new Vista in here. Isn't that cool? So, so far I found uh, four at the input stage and two more here. And what else have I found inside the frame unit? That will be the high voltage uh, you see the anode cable goes into that cabinet. And uh, that will be... Let me see if I, there's any way I can make a picture of that. There's another little tube in there. And at the bottom of the high voltage case here, I find a connector that looks like it's halfway out of the of its socket. So let's try and uh, touch this uh, socket a little bit here, see? This is not so good. This is very loose, this connector. And I can't get it all the way up here. And there's a very, very big connector here. And I think this goes to all the rear mounted transistors and such in case you want to take away the entire back panel. That big hefty connector here let me show you something that is a little bit worrying. If I just grab it a little bit, see, snippity snobbity. And it goes in and out with just a few grams of force. Really? Choop. And just keep finding more and more cool treasures inside this unit. So I removed the shielding plate right here. So we can have a better look. Look at that. So there's a power pentode, the M8082, and I believe this one is driving the high voltage section uh, of this. This is, of course, the anode supply. And also, we have a, a DY51 high voltage rectifier. And uh, that will be the anode point. And this is, of course, connected directly to the high voltage windings you see we got a ton of windings here and there's only one winding right there that goes around the transformer ferrite core and that one winding is the 1.4 volts for the heater inside this diode and here is the anode connection to the cathode ray tube Oh, I love it. This is a little bit complex for high voltage supply, but we got some windings down here. That, I believe, is some of the primary windings. We also got some windings over here, another set of windings, and those two windings. So I think what we see here is one winding is 1.4 volts. So we've got two windings here. That is maybe the filament for that tube right there. And then we got some of these windings here doing push-pull or something like that for the AC oscillator. 
But why have we got all those transistors? That is a little bit amazing. I better put all this back together. So I was looking at the time base units and I find this problem here with one of the tremors. And you see, I couldn't really figure out what to do. How is this assembled? It's just dangling around like that. So I figured, hey, let's have a look at the other one. Because this one got exactly the same. And that one is mounted nice and fine. And then it hits me. There's this very special screw holder thing here for that potentiometer that goes like that. And I don't have that part. So that is a little bit difficult for me to fix this um, right here and right now. How annoying. So I'm still doing my visual inspection around the different modules. And this is, of course, the channel 1 and 2 vertical amplifier and input system here. And as you can see here, this unit is really, really packed as well. But not as much as the time bases. We have a lot of empty space in here as well. But what I see here is, look at that. The blue Cena diode there is completely correct. But we are a little bit lucky. It reads 4.3 volts. And uh, what else have I seen here in... Um, in the vertical input that will be channel one input attenuator and you see we got some missing screws and a missing cover plate and the idea is all the different uh, attenuator stages they should be grounded as you can see here to the outer chassis when they're not in use and one is broken like that if we look at the other input attenuator, see, it's neatly packed like that. So you can rotate it nice and fine. You can hear all the contacts. They slide around this uh, cover. And let's look at the... See? See, of course, you need to be careful like that then it works so but isn't that a very very sexy way to do an input attenuator with a carousel switch like that i am a little bit impressed and we can see if we lift up this plate here you can take out one of the attenuator stages and it consists of course of a few resistors and a capacitor so you can adjust for the compensation of this uh, yeah, attenuator level it's just beautiful nothing is spared to make it as good as possible i am a little bit impressed the output from this amplifier board goes via these it looks a little bit like bnc connectors but where the locking mechanism has been removed and this is of course because this is 100 megahertz and the output impedance and high voltage uh, drive this is uh, in deflection amplifier mode so this is high voltage and all that kind of stuff so if they want to transfer the signals like that and that will be all the low voltage low speed stuff that goes here there's another cool thing about this unit. There is, of course, a delay line, and they packed it inside a little box like this. I think we should definitely open here and have a look at the delay line. That will be one fantastic long delay line. And look at the thickness of the wires here. That is something... Normally they are a lot thinner. Well, well. So let's try and do the first power on. Maybe I should see if I can move this. Oh, damn, we 
right, so here we so what have we got here i uh, think we can see more or less the entire scope how cool is that so this is the on off switch i think so let's try and turn on mains and nothing bad happens we got light and what is this blinkity blinkity doing maybe a warm-up it's using 144 watts Why is it blinking like that? The power on. <laughs> I did not expect that. Hmm. Well, well. What can we um? What can we poke around with? Intensity is here. We got different intensities for A, B, trays. La 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 la. Let's, uh, that will be position, right? Yeah, I did not expect this thing to work anyway. Oh, what happened here? Now it's using zero watts, no, seven watts. And I poked this. Okay, let's turn it off immediately. I was touching the slope and then flip. Fuse. <laughs> At least there's a, there's a there is an old crappy smell like burned dust or something like that. <laughs> but at least it is now fully dead. But we had a little bit of fun so far. Just trying oh, a few yeah. times and it repeats itself. It has uh, something to do with time. So when I turn this on and it looks like it's a little bit alive, I don't have any beam or anything, but it looks like we got some of the voltages running. So I'm starting to look a little bit around if I can maybe figure this out. We got some test points here for the different voltages. And that is uh, of course uh, from the power supply here. And down here we got all the capacitors. I don't know if you can see down here we got tons of capacitors mounted right here but unfortunately this is how they look this one here is really bad we got a few of them down there that's really bad and uh, they yeah you see here leaked blown up capacitors so that is just going to take me a lot of time to go and poke around here and change all the capacitors so that will not be a the scope of today's video I simply do not have time to poke around with all that today but maybe it is possible that that is the problem that it figures out the voltages they are not good enough and then it's somehow shut down and fold back this is typical to have some sort of protections uh, in the different uh, systems like this because this is a very very big and very very expensive Oxiloscope, so of course I expect the different voltages to have some sort of fold back and protection. Anyway, I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much for watching, and I think we went through more or less how this fantastic and beautiful oxiloscope was designed, and we did of course find quite a lot of small things to fix, and um, that was more or less all I wanted to show you. So uh, come back again and uh, see some more cool videos. Bye for now.